Okay, we are back. And uh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to do the clacker. And then we got a couple of cool things to show you before we get started. We're off on a little tangent again, of course, like always. <laughs> but here we go. Okay, let me show you. Remember last week, um, Raven was not here. And he was not here because he's, this is a busy time of year. He's doing a lot of work. He is a balloon artist, true artist. He does big decor. I'm a balloon twister. I like to do small stuff. He's agreed to let me show you this video we've just been passing around on his phone. This is from this weekend, right? Yes. This, yeah. Where is it? You have the best camera, Dave. If you I know. Can play here, it. you pass it up to me and I'll, let's see. We, is it playing? Here we go. Check this out. Huh? That's made out of balloons. That's yeah. made out of balloons because he's a balloon artist. He specializes in balloon decor and costumes. And that is not Mr. Potato Head. That's a facsimile. Mr. <laughs> Potato Head is a trademark of the this is, this is Mr. Yam Head. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Yam Head is what this is. We found a yam that was just the right shape to do it. Because I am what I am. It's a Mr. Spudwinski. <laughs> pretty cool stuff, man. Pretty cool yeah. stuff. Oh, good. Hey, that works out pretty good holding up the phone to the to the camera, huh? There, That's great. okay. That's like you all, like he made that thing out of balloons. That's crazy fun. Yeah. Insane, amazing. In the theme of celebrating artistry, uh, these guys haven't seen these, but I got to show them to you as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys know it, but um, our amazing. Um, rogue medical man thaddeus ian little he's the one who paints our minis for us and we have a lot of minis lots and lots and lots of minis most of them they're unpainted and he has been willing to help out and do a bunch of painting and i'm going to show you uh, one of the recent batches that he finished off these are not minis that you're going to see uh in the near future in the campaign but maybe in the far future of the campaign want you to have a look at these. I'm going to see if that can. Oh, yeah. That looks terrific. Beautiful. We're Absolutely eventually gorgeous. going to get a mini camera. So while Amanda is our chat master, uh, Thaddeus, Ian is our mini master by a long shot. That's one. Here, I'm going to pass these around so you guys can see. But look, 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 look. We have a whole collection that he has done. I'm trying to get it to zoom in so you can see. Oh, I got him backwards. Let me turn him around. The amount of time and attention spent. And the color that he chooses. Detailed. I love so the red that you made. These are orcs, big orcs. Ian, sometime could you do a video of yourself painting? Check please. these guys out. Yeah, someday we'll, we'll we'll try and take the camera over and do a video. Even if it's just for a few moments. Let me like show you as soon as the over. camera focuses in. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. You can do it. Maybe you move you know, towards the center of the frame. One of them has to be at the center of the frame. Yeah. Where the... Uh, <laughs> Does it give it up on me? Like, I don't know, man. Auto there we go. kicks in occasionally. It's... 3D House of Horrors. 3D House of Horrors. Oh, shit. Sorry, I forgot. No, that's good. Is the, how tiny must your brush be to tight, like paint the, the tiny two, three hairs. details <laughs> of that's pretty incredible. The my goodness. Mm -hmm. So what we, my goal is, and it's always been a goal for, for months now is to try and get, we'll permanently get a camera station eventually set up that we can switch to. And we'll have one of these little guys we put on a little turntable and the, w there won't be this issue with, uh, focus because come on, come on, baby, get that focus. Dedicated macro lens. Yes. Ooh, we're going to finish one last one. We're going to finish with this bad babe right here. Oh, yeah. Check her out. I tap Isn't that. that amazing? Yeah. Well, Just need, need fantastic, yeah. fantastic artwork. So, My a goodness, big. Like, I 
just cannot let's have a 360 attention to view detail. now let's have a big round of applause for Ooh, woo, ian. for ian so good. and all of his amazing artwork that he's done on these that is incredible how long does it take I'm, you to for Raven? oh yeah yeah i only work in like macro i don't work <laughs> in this scale that's how long does it take you to paint a figure it, it depends that some sometimes i will start with a color and do everything in that color and then i'll move on to the next color and so oh, it, just, it just depends Okay. Beautiful artistry, though. Really has got a real talent. He, however, the way you make the miracles happen, it's just beautiful. It's yeah. so beautiful. So, where incredible. did these figures come from? Oh my God, you just killed a perfectly good orc. <laughs> we'll see if he died. I don't know if he died. So, that's a good question from Lavinia. Where do these figures come from? Um, in the past, I have subscribed to and supported various uh, miniature. Uh, des STL designers on Patreon. Um, as a matter of fact, in the trailer for our video, we support three or four specific Patreon artists right now. And uh, these were uh, designs that that I 3D printed from the STL files that I um, purchased from as part of my membership supporting these Patreon artists. And that's I'm where they came from waiting for my elegoo's jupiter they are on back order the elegoo jupiter is one of the best uh printers available right now for 3d printing for rob is the one who's taken over the 3d printing for yeah. me as far as doing minis mm. which has been much appreciated we there's only so much any one of us can do when that's up and running again when he's got a yeah. 3d printer that's up and running we will uh, make some more of some specific things that we need. Yeah. One, first thing that I want to do is let's get that weird tiger done. Right, right. We want to get a weird because tiger. Because we yeah. want, uh, I, and I think I've got, didn't I send you the file for it? I don't believe you sent me that one yet. All right, we're going to have to look and see if we can find the yeah. file. I kind of want to just get like a porcelain kitty and just set it on there and be like. <laughs> uh, yeah, like <laughs> a, a humble kitty. <laughs> right now we have just kind of a little plastic yeah, a, a regular the tiger. tiger the no, dollar no, no, no. Like, the dollar store tiger. dollar store tiger right now he's terrific right now percy is a dollar store tiger i have a dollar <laughs> store tiger with a big dual pass grin on his face that's good kind of looks like him yeah no <laughs> it's plain to see all right let's continue on it is morning yes, and you are now decided that you are going to move continue on southward yeah what is, you've got your spell slots, you've okay. all recovered whatever hit points you may have missed. You can remember to click the little uh, bed icon is on your thing. Is there anybody who is thing? in need of healing at this point in time? No. No. Your pixie is pixie. is now 12 hours from death, and it is up to you to decide what you're going to do. Um, In Josephine Smith style, I'm going to be... Hello. Streperous. Oh. Uh, <laughs> fine. And stomp around a little bit and say in a stubborn manner, let's get this show on the road. And and <laughs> I'm going to say to you in character, mm -hmm. I think we may have time to honor her spirit and help it pass quietly into the other world. God, you guys still want to euthanize her. And I'm just like, it's like one of those things, like, I know it has to be done, but I don't want any part of it. But if we find her friends, her spirit may still abide around. It could be drawn back. But if back we wait now, she could become imperiling to all of us. We I, understand it is a this difficult This is decision. so difficult. <laughs> may I, so may difficult. I suggest that we start by rounding up our mastodon? Yep, let's get the mastodon up, and uh, I'm going to yeah. get some ropes. Uh, we've got the climbing gear. I'm going to pull out some ropes, and we're going to tie. I mean, the more action, and we might get some options that we don't yeah. have right now. Okay. And while you were discussing uh, this in your morning preparations, all of a sudden you hear some sound on the road. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a 
it sounds like somebody singing. Ooh, they're coming up from the south, headed north. I'm going to um, undercover sneak up and see if I can get a closer look. Okay, so... Miss Smith, uh, would you like to... Ad- stealth? Whoever yeah, is walking up the road is making no effort to be quiet. Uh, you're going to try and stealth. Go ahead and roll to see how you do. Oh, I've got... Sorry about the back screen, guys. So here, I'll fix that up. And now, direct from Google. I am stealthing with the road. Uh, let's go back <laughs> let's to... Let's see how we do. Okay, my stealth is plus 13. Go ahead. Four plus 13. <laughs> That's still okay. And I rolled a nine. You guys are what, already what in the bush. Self be? So Thaddeus, are you going to attempt to get a view of the road and see what's coming? Yes. All right. So as Thaddeus creeps up and begins, uh, you can hear the, the whatever is coming louder, and it is clearly somebody singing. As Thaddeus looks down the road from his uh, position, this is what he sees. Oh, no, he's adorable. <laughs> it's like those guys in the labyrinth that have their own lives on their back. He's uh, walking up the road. He's uh, just about past your position. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden he stops and he turns around and he looks directly at Thaddeus and he says, Ho, oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, there, no need to hide out, youngin. You can come out now. I could hear you folks talking and babbling and arguing away half an hour ago down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you are very perceptive, sir. My name is Thaddeus he Poindexter. Stands. This is my associate, Miss Smith. Okay, so he sees the two of you come out. Good, good you day, show sir. yourselves. Good day. All right, and what about the rest of you? What are the rest of you well, going to do? I, I noticed no, that there's a back at camp. Well, I was working with uh, Lavinia on of fitting out the uh, mammoth, but uh, I could take a break and come talk to this guy. So. And well, do you really want to? Because I feel like we're actually in combat right now. Well, we I, don't jinx it. So. <laughs> no, he just said, who is here? So I know. Oh, yeah, she's worried that I said I that. But you've been able to hear us. All of us. Hear us. So he so knows there's know more than the two of you, yeah, right, clearly. But he looks at Thaddeus and, and he says, By the way, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Monty, and I am known as Monty the Traveling Tinker. Ah. And I think... I can guess at what you might be, you and all your companions. Looks like wilders to me, and fresh off the portal, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh. Well, you are very perceptive, sir. Well, I knows a bit about wilders. I'm a wilder myself, you know. We can so tell. that was long, long time ago. And he realized that all of this time, he's actually been speaking to you in English and not in Latin. Oh. So he clearly, okay. clearly has partly got your number anyways. Oh, he obviously looks like says, a trader of some sort, so he's got something to, to trade. says, I well, know. yes, a uh, matter of fact, you know, now I recalls it. I might have had a glimpse of you folks before. Was you down at the rendezvous a few months back? Yeah, we were. We Indeed never we were. talked it, but I remember walking by some games. Mm. And I thought I saw some young gal shooting a gun at a at a duck or some such. And this <laughs> looks awful like Smith. this young gal you got that here. That would be our Miss Smith. We're that very proud of her prowess. Yeah. Well, now, what you all doing in this part of the world, I be wondering. Now, don't tell me. I'll tell you what. Willing to make you a trade. Trading's what I do. Trading's what I love. And I'll trade you a story. Trade your tail, your tail, for a good one of mine. Oh, How yes, How come sir. you to be it, in it, this bit of the country? Information is very valuable, in my opinion. Tail for a tail. That's Monty's motto, you it know. It has been a long and winding road. You're we not, have you're gone not, with You're not me. even here. Well, I, I just, said I was going to take a break. Yeah. All oh, right. Oh, so okay. he's come oh, out. He wandered up. He oh, wandered okay. up. Okay. I'm going to take a break. And, and I followed him. Yeah. Okay. So we're all here, apparently. <laughs> okay. So, by the way, let's. And, and uh, am I bringing my mask on out? Let's get 
something sorted out for the maps. Uh, let me see if I can find a good map for you guys to be walking in. Let's say that it is... This will have to do. This isn't an ideal map for this, but this will have to do. We're just going to take one of these paths. We're going to blow this way up. And uh, I'm going to turn down that crazy music that's coming out of it. We're just going to blow it up. I'm going to ignore the crosshatch on this one. Oh, <laughs> I always do it on my screen. It never does it on the, the game screen. I did this behind you. Mm -hmm. We're going to go right about here. And here is, where is he? Oh, we need to go to the book. Hey, give me three, six, or give me Dave view for a second. It's time to go to the book of the creatures of era. Book of the creatures of era. Ooh. Creatures of era. Ooh. First of all, we have to <clears> open and close it. There we go. And now we're going to open it and see. You didn't miss it. And sure enough, if Monty ain't been hiding in the book for a while, you know, <laughs> he's taken off his hat and pulled out his pipe as he talks to you. And sure enough, there he is. Oh, he's from Santa Claus. He's being all a painted up, don't you know, by here. Well, he's uh, having a hard time focusing. Mm -hmm. Hey, focus me up, would you be a little bit maybe or something? I don't know. Have I not got it in the right place, do you think? Ah, there, he is. there we go. Once again, painted by my good friend Ian Little, so that you can see he's got quite a pack on his back, does he? And we are going to put him on the screen so we can go to the game screen and we'll get him right to where he's going to have to be. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to just go... And he is going to be here. You guys were parked a bit by a stream. That pack, my goodness. And you can guys position yourselves where you want to be on the screen. Mm hmm That sounds like combat to me. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing. If I do combat every single time, then you'll always think there's combat. So I'm going to make sure I change it up sometimes. And also, this was my excuse to show off that really, really awesome mini. It's super rad. It's a great mini. Okay, I'm backing up just a little bit, please. Now, as you were showing that, I'm going to put on the uh, back screen a picture of Monty, so we've got a little bit of frame of reference. And there you go. Now you're uh, talking to Monty, and you got nothing to fear from Monty as long as you're a good one. So I know you're a little uncomfortable. These will be hard times, and sometimes the roads be mighty scary. Well, we have been guests of Huck wedgies and even mermaids. And we have been in a haunted castle. We have gone from the hills to the valleys. We have gone under the ground with the with the dwarves. We have uh, been captured by witches and we've been uh, surrounded by tree monsters and everything has in between has happened to us. Not only that, we were guests of a frog people. And they uh, enchanted us so that we had to help them get married. It was quite the adventure. And then we climbed to the top of a finger of fire in the middle of the plains. Well, now that sounds like years of adventure all crammed in to uh, one quick little bit and not one of it, bit of it makes a true tale. Mm. It sounds like 40 tales in one, and I'd like one good one out of that if you'd like a tale for me. So how come you to be upon this road here, ahead and south, and where did you might be coming from? Well, we popped Do out. we want to disclose this information? Why not? Yes, we do. You know, I do speak English just like you can. So yeah, you could always. I can him. completely I, I understand what you would be saying. Oh. Do we want to disclose? No, no, I don't want yes. you giving me nothing that you don't want to give. But remember, I'm a trader, and that means if you give me something good, I'll give you something good in return. Hi, Abuela. Can we talk to this man? 
Is he is he trustworthy? And uh, Monty looks and his eyes open and they widen a little bit as he sees you pull out the skull. And he looks at the skull and he says, Bye, Gordon, never thought I'd see the day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank Abuela you. says, Yes, you can trust this man. And I'd like to tell you this in a riddle, but Dave hasn't finished making Abuela's riddles yet, so you're just going to have to hear me say it like this. I say let's tell him the story of the uh, hot I, air balloon. I have Go to ahead. ask him a question I first. can't remember it. I have to ask him. <laughs> Someone else Dear remember. sir, you know my grandmother. How do you know my grandmother? I believe I offered to trade. But you've got to share a story with me before I'll share one with you. Now, I'll only ask one more time. I, how sir, do you all come to be on this road and where you are coming from? Okay. So let's tell him honestly. Okay, go ahead. Mm. Also, uh, he notices there's a cat at the door and somebody needs to let the cat in. <laughs> well, we could summarize it by saying we appeared from one of the mighty hall of portals. Portal through to the top of the mountain, came down and discovered a fairy, or a pixie. pixie, who was harmed by fire and tied up to a tree which was burnt. The entire forest was leveled with fire and, uh, and it appeared to be scarred by some passing army. And when we attempted to rescue this pixie from her chains, uh, the, uh, we were set upon by uh, zombies and uh, had to defend ourselves. So we finally rescued the, the pixie from her chains and we're taking her on the road to attempt to find a cure from the, the fairy queen or whoever was the closest enchanted individual of high standing that could help us. When we were set upon yet again by a, a group of uh, zombie elves that were uh, undead and attempted to kill us. One of them contained an evil spirit which jumped from one member of our party to another member of the party, requiring us to, to render them unconscious and wrest the spirit from them using their own will. When finally we had finished this battle, we had still gotten no closer to attempting to cure the pixie. So we endeavored to take the pixie with us through the Hall of Portals yet again, to find somewhere closer to the Queen of the Elves, who could help us, we hoped, with our plight, and help, hopefully save our pixie friend. But not only that, save us, and help us with our quest to defeat the Iron Fist, or as the Iron Cudgel, Cudgel as our friend would call him. <clears throat> Okay, so do it again, but this time as a Shakespearean sonnet. Okay. <laughs> well, Monty says, you and know, none it's, of that was a lie. it's not bad as far as a tale for a first-timer goes, but you know, there's a couple of holes in your story what's needs filling in. You say you was at a portal. What portal might this be? Now, I know you must have found the Hall of Fires because that's mm -hmm. what you'd be talking about is the place between portals. I thought you what a portal you talking about that's had this fires around it. I ain't a heard of this and there's no fires around here. Hmm. Uh, this is further south. Do we have notes? The army of the, uh, the walking, the marching dead have come, the soldiering dead have come that far south, or that far north that they have burned down a fairy forest. And it is it is quite the tragedy. If you were to go further south, you would see this has befallen this section of forest. It is burned down. Celestia Vale portal. Celestia Vale, yes. Mm, he thinks to himself, and you hear him mumbling to himself, Celestia Vale, oh, this is bad news. So you say... Celestia's Vale, very south end of the Feywood, Celestia's Vale yes. be. Not many these days he were even able to use the portals, much less have interest in them. I generally don't use them myself, as it doesn't help with my trading. But you come into the Celestia's Vale portal, 
and there was fires around it, you say. The, the this is where burned. this pixie was you was a talking about? Yes, that's Be one. that pixie you got wrapped up over there in that funny hide? Yes. Let's have a look. Well then. As Monty walks over and waits for you to... Uh, Open I'll, up to I'll unwrap the her enough that she can be seen. Carefully. And carefully avoid her biting my fingers. Monty lays his big pack down on the ground horizontally and, and uh, walks over and kneels down. And as you open up the burrito hide that you've got, the pixie, and he looks in for a few moments and intently gazes at the pixie. And, and you see a very sad look on his face. And he's like, oh... This is bad. Not, not can be done for her. This is bad, I say, and it's bad news you give. It's a sad, sad thing when they get bit like this. For there ain't no cure, you know. Many have tried. Even the queen herself of the Fae has tried. And there ain't no cure. There ain't no hope. Looks to me like she's a passing sometime. In the next day or so. You know this means we're going to have to burn her. It's the only way to stop the ghouls. And it's a fate. It's a curse worse than anything. Can we like at least shoot her before we burn her? Oh no. Like and like. I was going <laughs> to. Sorry. Just a quick one. So no. No. Like not not be. burn alive. Well. Like, no, no, she won't be burned alive. She... Yes. Yes. Monty hearing you talk about it says, look, you know, it's probably best to let her pass in her own good time. Mm. As long as she's not in great pain and it looks now that she's in such a deep, deep coma, it's not going to matter anyways. Mm. But as soon as she is no longer with us, then don't waste any time. Remember, you've only got hours before the curse begins to take hold, the final stage of the curse, and she prepares to rise again mm. and you don't want to fight one of these believe me mm. you're a forgetting the power they have mm. and in a pixie it'll be great power indeed i i've had my fair share of seeing them and i've had my fair share of burning them at the southern end mm. you don't want to do it i know who you mean when you say the iron fist mm. And I've seen his armies and I've seen the great horrible aberration himself riding on his skeletal war horse with his great metal claw hanging at his side, using it to be the, as the final executing blow more times than you can guess when we were at battle. But uh, that's for another time. That was years ago. You know, we've been... Fighting this war against them now for nigh on more than 20 years. And before that, I came to this place from the other side. By the other side, of course, you know, I mean the eastern lands. Not these western lands, but the eastern lands across the sea. You might have gathered from my accent that I ain't around from around these western lands. So there... Now I've got most of your tail, but you say it was Celestia's Veil. How did you get up here? You used another portal. You probably come from Verdanta's portal, didn't you? I, that is I, correct. Heading south? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and what you be thinking you're going to do now? What, what are you wanting? Where are you wanting to head? Well, we wanted to consult with the Queen of the Elves and see if she could help us in our battle against the soldiering dead. And, and the pixie had something that she wanted to give. A, a yes, mirror a to give to mirror. her. Yeah. And, um, sir, if you wouldn't mind, as you're obviously a connoisseur of uh, gifts or uh, goods traded back and forth, can you identify any special uh, prospects about this mirror for us? Well, about the mirror, it's not going to be a trade. This is for the pixie and for the queen, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you. We, we're just asking. There's a message in that mirror that only the fey queen can see. Uh, and so I would say it's a good quest you have, and you should follow through on it. But beware. Taint as easy to get into the fey wood as it once was, what with all of the problems and all of the undead about there's a great, heavy, magical barrier runs along all the rivers that encompass 
the Feywood. You can get across it in some places, what be bridges, and you'll recognize one if you stay on this path, because eventually it does lead to one. You'll have to figure it out for yourself how to get across, and if you're okay and you're good ones, and you do it the right way, you should have no trouble. But beware, there might be trouble be between here and there. I can't say for sure. So, yes, I would say continue on your quest. Now, before you go, you talk about identifying objects and things of this nature. Well, that sounds like more trading to me. Hmm. And for this kind of trading, I think it's time that we had a proper place uh, to do it. Monty walks over to his big pack that's laying on the ground, taps it with his staff, and he mumbles some words that you can't catch under your breath, and all of a sudden the entire pack floats up into the air and begins to move and roil and spin around, and within seconds, bloop, it becomes a big tent filled with wares. Fun. And it is Monty's trading tent on a banner on the top, Monty the Tinker. He walks around behind one of the barrels and stands there and says, now, what can I help you with? Mm -hmm. And so. Thank you for admitting us to Monty's Hall. (laughs) (laughs) Why, if you look at Monty and let's get him up on the screen here for you. Indeed. (laughs) You will, in fact, see that, in fact, his last name is Yall. Y-A-H-L. Yall. Monty Yall. And you're right about him wanting to make a deal for sure. He's always ready to make a deal. So, good old Monty, as we were talking to him, we're going to put him up on the screen, and we are going to share him with you. You all can be what they call an observer of this here feller. I just there found that I have a small empty jug that um, can hold 12 ounces. Sorry, Mr. DM, how did you bring, is that something we can bring up on our local screens? Can you see Monty the Tinker now on your local screens? Can you uh, click un- on under him? Under which, no. it's not the party. Look no, under NPCs. NPCs? Um, I do see it now, yes. If you go under NPCs, uh, can you click up old Monty? Monty the Traveling the Tinker. The Traveling no. Tinker. You'll see his name is Monty Vall, V-H-A-L. Sorry, well, I misspelled or mispronounced it before. VHL, he's a traveling merchant. And you will see all the list of goods from his wild and wonderful little booth that he's got. And there's quite a list indeed. Just about anything a proper wilder might need who's a starting out on his adventures. Look at all of those. Ring of the Tiger. Now, one of the Monty, things I might be suggesting to you, Monty says, is that you Monty. take some time to think about this, especially after your uh, stream be done tonight. You can go home and log in on your own computers <laughs> and look at all me where so you can decide what you want to buy next week because right now it's 10.07 and we're only going to be a playing this game, you and me, for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> So let's just get on with it with there's anything that you want to start out with. Now, I believe I had a request. The first request, and I'm going to take them in order, was from this madam across from me here with the glasses, a holding up a skull. And I agreed to a trade, a trade, a tale for a tale. Now, the tale what you offered me, it's all right as it goes, tad incomplete, and I would like more of it, especially on the back end, before you got to that portal, how you even found the portals in the first place. Mm. But we don't have a lot of time tonight, at least, to make that discussion, so I'll let it go for now. And I think it's time that we talked about that uh, skull that you're holding and the runes that are on it. For I've seen it before and I know the person it was before it was a skull. I knew her in life. Could you tell me about my grandmother? She's your grandmother, is she? Well, I can't tell you 
how it went from who I knew to uh, how it came to be like that. But I'd recognize her aura and her power anywhere. And it turns out that you be holding the skull of Marie King Gu. The voodoo sorceress. She's a famous wid midwife as well and a wilder in her own right. I don't know much of what her life was back across the veil in Terra. Well, Earth as we all know it, but Terra as they call it here. What I know of her life here is that she was in a great battle against Iago. Can we put it right on just on that screen so that people can read it? Because this is pretty awesome. Thank you. I'll read it out for you and then you'll understand what it says here. This engraved skull is all that remains of a powerful voodoo sorceress named Marie Kingu. Me Marie Kingu or Kingue, probably is really the way it's pronounced, was a famous midwife. Capilata medicine woman and voodoo priestess of Haiti. Marie Kingwe was a slave officially active as a midwife on a plantation outside Cap Francais during the 1770s and 1780s. She was famous all over the colony as a voodoo priestess and medicine woman. She was a controversial figure and made friends as well as enemies among both slaves and slave owners, black, white, and free people of color. She was reported to the authorities in 1785 for quackery and accused of trying to encourage a slave rebellion, which, by the way, is all true history, but was hidden by her followers. The circumstances of her death are unknown, but her spirit is denied rest and cursed to occupy her skull for eternity. Well, hello, I believe it. Now, I will tell you one thing I do know for sure, and that is all of this stuff that happened in Terra has no record of what happened to her here in Era, and that is a long number of years indeed after she came to this world from that. That's a whole other story. It is another tale, a very long one, with many twists and turns. And how she came to be back in Terra again, as, as what her remains are, I have no idea. But at least I can tell you who she was. Thank you. And why she has the power she has. I'll tell you also who cursed her to that skull, and it was Iago himself. Nice. <laughs> so. I don't think any of us are surprised by that. Not no. really, no. <clears throat> I'll tell you one thing more I know, too, of the story, one little bit of it. And that is what was remained of her, her only her remains, her skull, was stolen from Iago by her very own daughter. So what's happened there? Even her daughter's name, I don't know, but I've heard tell that the skull was stolen and uh, now we know where it's gone and what its fate is. You. There you go. That's a tale for a tale. And now, back to the trading. Do you want to trade tales or do you want to trade things? Well, I, I thought have... we were going to pick up the trading next week or no? Well, we've got another uh, 15 minutes. Okay. So I'll let you guys okay, so pick. You can trade things. You can trade tales before we wrap it up at 10.30 p.m. And Mountain Standard Time. Do tales tonight and then things next day? Well, could do. Sure. Are you willing to tell the tale? Absolutely. All right. Use your mic. Your mic's off to your side there. Let me tell you, sir, um, how I ended up with this band of misfits. Let's give a, get a, a Josephine on the screen. Oh, sorry. there you go. All right. There we are. Tell us how you band. How how come you to be with this band of misfits, Miss Josephine? Once upon a time, a very long time ago, I was a poor girl in the wilderness in a cabin in the woods. Uh, you okay? I love you. Um, cabin in the woods with uh, my 
mother and my elderly father and my several siblings. And father passed away. And mother couldn't keep us. She couldn't keep us. There, there was no way. We were struggling. So mother uh, traded me to a family in hopes that they would raise me in a decent fashion uh in exchange for my labor and that was not the that was not the case uh they were very abusive and i ended up escaping and i learned i learned how to scream and st <laughs> wait grew up tall and she grew up right i don't think yeah anyways um I, I learned how to fight. I learned how to hunt. I learned how to trap. I learned how to fend for myself. And I was, am an amazing marksman. Uh, who would have known? Like who, who normally figures that out when they're nine years old? Just this girl. Um, and, uh, I started trapping and selling, selling the pelts, um, selling the, uh, the, pre uh, the pelts, pelts, the <laughs> meat? Pelt, just the pelts, um, the, the selling, selling what I, uh, had hunted, um, locally. And I ended up making a good amount of money and I was able to bring it back home to my mother and she was able to pay off that outstanding loan on the on the farm uh by the time i was 15 years old and by the time i was 15 years old i was already bored of the the life and um so when uh wild bill uh wild buffalo bill rolled through town and saw a snippy little uh, sharpshooter and said, hey, girl, you want a job? I said, yes, sir, I would like a job. And so that's where we went. And um, I mean, it all went downhill since then. I, the, 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 <laughs> I, 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 would, I, I would like to say the few years that I had in uh, in Wild Wild Bill's uh, traveling road show were really awesome, and meeting my husband and having our daughter it was the most amazing time, and I'm grateful that we had that. Um. But they're no longer with us. And so F, the train company, who caused the, 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 obviously their disrepair of their tracks is what made the train derail and kill my loved ones. And they've never taken any responsibility for it i will never forgive the train company i don't even care like we're not even in that world anymore but this is the burden that weighs on me every single day i wake up in the morning and i think about this and i think about my revenge and i just hope one day i get back to tara so that I can slit the throats of every railroad company man that exists. That's my story. Nice. <laughs> well, that's a story and no mistake. Well done, young miss. Well done. All right. Well... It's difficult for me to pick one out of so many what with everything that's gone on, but let me tell you some tales of the Eastern lands. It's been many a year since I've been back there. But uh, I'll tell you 
I'll tell you a good one that has to do with both the eastern lands and the western lands, and it's the tale of Erengath. Now, Erengath, they say, was a knight from the Crusades. And, uh, On his way back, and these are crusades in terror, you understand. It's on his way back that he never made it home. Somewhere, like you, like me, like so many others, he ended up stumbling through the veil on an accident, found himself in this world, all alone by himself, and was forced to make his way and find what he could. Now here's the thing. Well, there's lots of wilders. Why is this Aragath special? Here's why Aragath, Aragath is special. Because Aragath was the escort of the Fae Queen. And it might be good for you to know a little bit about the Fae Queen and about Aragath now that he has departed. And by departed, I don't mean that he's passed on. I mean that he's departed back across the veil. So when you run into the Fae Queen, if you're a queen, if you're ever able to make it, you're going to find that she'd be very sad. For she is alone now. Erengath is gone and taken their daughters with him. He's done this at her request. For Iago is not the only danger in the world. Y'all don't know anything about the dangers of the eastern lands. And as bad as Iago is, he can't hold a candle to the Scythian witch Huldra. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why I left the eastern lands. From what I hear now, she holds sway on all of the British Isle. Save the cursed Isle what you used to know maybe is the Green Isle or the Emerald Isle. It's the only place she don't hold sway, and that is because no one holds sway there. It's an isle that is now timeless in its curse. But I left because of Huldra. Now, I'm straying in my story because my story was about Erengath. Erengath made his way like myself from the eastern islands to the eastern isles to the western lands. And it's a long story with many little details, but eventually he met the queen of the Fae, and the two fell in love. And you know, they had five little girls together. They lived many years happily together, Until one day, word came that Haldra knew where they were. And Haldra's own bastard son, Gwildenai. Gwildenai is one of two evil, well, I shouldn't say they're both evil. I don't know much about his brother. But Gwildenai is definitely the evil one, raised by Huldra herself, resurrected as a baby and raised by Huldra herself. And word is that Gwildenai, word that reached the Fae Queen, is that Gwildenai has made a pact with the Aesir Vikings. And he is seeking, seeking everywhere, seeking out the Fae Queen and her daughters. He seeks to put an end to those daughters before the prophecy that he holds to true can come to pass. And so Aaron Gath has gone away with those girls, back where they can never be harmed, back across the veil to Terra. And the Fae Queen now sits on her throne alone. Excuse me, sir, what was the prophecy? Oh, the prophecy was that somewhere down the road... Someone would be born, and that child would ultimately be the death of Goldeneye, and ultimately the downfall and death of Huldra herself. So Goldeneye tries now to prevent that prophecy from happening, 
because it's not known who that child will be born to, but they do know it's the Fae Queen's, li Queen's lineage and it is one of her five little girls. Well, how so long, you how long sorry sir how long ago was this how many years? oh aaron gath has only departed in the last two years okay. three five it's hard to reckon between time here in this world compared to earth you know things move strangely in this world on earth you could come from there to here. You could spend a decade here, go back, and it seems like no time has passed at all. Did he depart to Terra, or did he just like skip across portals? No, he's he's departed through a veil, is what I've heard. For there's no place safe enough here on Era, not with the powers that Haldra and Gould and I both have been able to amass. So while you may be on a quest against Iago, there are other battles happening in the world and other stories going on that are separate from this one. And the story of Erangath is that he has gone back to Earth in a different time than the one he departed, from what I hear. Who knows, maybe you all even passed him someplace while you were there and he is there with his five little girls. Hmm. Do you know the names of the five little girls? I don't know any of their names, no. I have never heard of any of them. I believe one might be, no, but I'd be guessing. I'd just be guessing. I don't know if I ever heard those names spoke aloud. Let me think on it for a day and I'll see if I can remember. Because I don't want to misspeak about the Fay Queen's girls. So, my good friend, are you heading towards the Queen of the Elves? No, I'm heading north now. Okay. I'm heading north. I will not be using Verdantis. I never use the portals. I'll be heading north around Verdantis and up to the northwest. I might make a little venture off to the west and stop to see the Chahokians. Mm. You know, the Chahokians, they're fine moonshine makers, the Chahokians, and I'm a little partial to that. Dwarven whiskey is well enough, you, you know, and so is... The, the beautiful elven liqueurs, but Chahokian moonshine. That's got to be the biggest kick of them all. So I might go and stock up on a, a few jugs. Have you ever tasted it? I might have one last jug around here before I restock. I'll see if I can find it, and maybe we'll have a swig on me tonight. I would not tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> so I might go to the Chahokians, but then I'll be swinging up to the north, I'm sorry, the northeast. And uh, I'll head on to a couple of other settlements that I want to trade at today. Can I ask you a question? It's about our pixie and, and when her time comes, what is the best way to burn her? Well, you want to make sure it's a fire big enough that the no remains will be there. Nothing but ash, maybe a bit of bone but nothing that could ever be used to resurrect her. Like a fireball. Fire. Fireball. She's a wee bundle, so it's going to be easier to burn her up than it is a full-grown person. Mm -hmm. But I'd say a bonfire. Now, mind you, sometimes it's not safe to be making a bonfire in this country. So you keep well the vigil if you're going to do it. And I might be willing to stay around while you've done so, just to help you out in case there's a problem. For that one extra, wonderful, one extra set of eyes and one extra set of fists is not necessarily a bad thing. I mm. think I might owe it to the Fay Queen herself, as a matter of fact, for she'd been good to me over the years. Would a, a magical fire be a better solution than a bonfire? Only if it could consume her whole body. Uh, okay, so I have a spell that will consume a five-foot square that I can hold in one place for a minute. I'd we're, say we're that's not enough. We're already planning her funeral, and she's We could not use that dead. as the starter, but, but I'd say your fire and use that like to the start most it. Morbid thing it, ever. it may be, but it's... but. You're going to need a pyre. You're going to need a funeral need pyre. Right. I know, it's just it's just heartbreaking. I know. 
That's well. really the only way to do it. And remember, you'll be doing her an honor to do this for her the right way rather than leave her laying on the battlefield like so many of her own friends and family. They've laid on the battlefield until they themselves have risen and now they fight for the other side. And I will personally sing her to honor her spirit as she passes. I will pray for her and I don't even pray. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what I would suggest then. Why don't we hold a vigil tonight for her until her passing is done and then we can resume with the trading and the other stuff. Uh, and um, this will give us a chance for you folk to get your thoughts together about what's going to happen as far as the mm-hmm. funeral pyre. So that's the end of what really Monty hard. suggests to you. And uh, bear, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Monty suggests to you that uh, you hold a vigil tonight until she passes, and then you it'll give you time to prepare the funeral pyre. Uh, the other thing is, is that he thinks, you know, in honor of her vigil in honor of the fake queen that after that's done, then that you can go back to the regular business of trading. This will give you the practical ability this week. You know, you can all log in from your own computers, right? If you need help with that, let me know and I'll try and help you send you the information, but you should be able to log in from your own computers at home. Mm -hmm. That way you can look right at Monty's monstrously long lists of it, goodies. It, yeah, it's big. It looked huge. It was great. One of the big benefits of meeting Monty is that all those items are identified. There are no mystery items there. Right. So, and you've already just said earlier today and um, last week that we've got some shit we got to get rid of. So it'll help you get rid of some yes, stuff. Right. Yeah, and we do have a lot of of treasure right now we you might want to think questions. about and write down what questions you want to ask monty while you have still got him yeah. because he's not going to stick he's around forever the once the and goods yeah once the yeah. trading's done yeah. Yeah. he'll help you out but then he'll be on his way hmm. so ask whatever got questions about the world you want to ask he'll be the one to answer you and he'll want to trade in return so think about what you want to give as far as answers because one of the things that I want to figure out is how do we get an in with the giants of the sky and the mountains? How, how do we figure out how to deal with them, how to do commerce with them, how to maybe even convince them to help us with our battle? You know, because this is their world. And if the soldiering dead are nothing but it is and it isn't, they don't really yeah. give a crap that much about what's happening on the land. Right. Because they are in the sky so anything could be happening down here but then the 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 viking uh, giants of the mountains they could be convinced i'm sure because eventually the soldiering dead will come to them and start to annoy the shit out of them viking giants of the mountains which mountains because there was one mountain where they are terrible and they slave people yeah the aesir the Aesir mountain range Aesir mountain is home range. to the like Aesir Vikings. Yeah. They're the slavers. And then the Vanir mountain range, and these are whole ranges, yeah. is is home to the Vanir Vikings who are traders. Yeah. That's why I said what now. P-R-A-D-E-R-S. They are trade. They trade. Yeah, traders as can, opposed to slave traders. And right. if we can work with them, maybe they would help us because by then we should have acquired quite a bit of wealth and influence if we now they are on the remember they are on the other side of the continent from you right now yeah that's true but then i mean how much is quite a bit of wealth we've we've got a like a handful of coins and gems and stuff basically some other bits of treasure and i but in comparison like we don't even know what's like if if we walk up to a giant and say hey i've got these 12 gems he'll maybe laugh at us (laughs) <laughs> we do have air like clusters. Oh, quite a few right. of them. Not quite well, three. Three, three of them. Three, three air like clusters, my friend. Yes, enough to fly a couple. Um, ships. actually, for which our, I paid a price. Yes, <laughs> yes, you did. Our friend has three air like clusters. Oh, We're just okay. taking along. Fine, fine. Yeah, his his bride That's price. Part of his dowry. <laughs> yes, his bride price. Something to keep in mind is that. 
as far as the crafting goes right now you're just doing like little basic level one crafting yeah. as you start out at level five mm. when you get into more and more high level crafting especially anything magical one of the ingredients that it will certainly require is going to be aerolite gems for the magical endowment mm. those aerolite gems will then be consumed so it is the equivalent of when a wizard has to pay gold for his spells that kind of thing right mm -hmm. so you're going to have to make decisions about what you can afford i mean even with even with uh, monty's goods there's a lot of great stuff there and there's you know how much are you going to of your gems are you going to spend on his stuff so think about it all. Let Random factoid. Um, I was looking around today and I realized that none of us at this table have brown eyes. Minor hazel. Random factoid. Mine are mostly brown. See, uh, look. They're no, hazel. Dave's are... Mine are probably the brown nest, although they get a little you, bit you've green got hazel, sometimes. You've got hazel. Yeah. You've got hazel. What the heck? Three hazel eyes? Yeah. And I'm blue. You're blue. He's blue. I'm gray sometimes except for when i cry and then i'm green you poofy, there you go. poofy cry guys <laughs> <laughs> but it's not right. weird None of us have brown eyes. any last minute questions for the uh game master before we cut off the stream and uh, hang it up for tonight I want to say thank you to everybody who's watched us tonight yes. mm -hmm. and yeah, the amount much. that you've contributed ideas and basically you've been here playing with us and that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So can I big hand to you guys. Thank you. We appreciate all of our viewers. It's, it actually means so much to us when uh, yeah. you, you guys don't see this, but we're, when right. we're off camera, we'll, uh, we'll start talking and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah started talking and blah, blah, blah started talking and they said this and they said that. And this person said this from last week and this person said that other thing from the other week. And we pay attention to it all. We really appreciate you guys. So. Uh, homework for the viewers at home based on what um, Josephine Smith shared about her backstory is that her character is based on Annie Oakley mm. and a lot of Annie Oakley's real life was quite amazing. So uh, check that out because a lot of the history is based on that. The whole idea behind this game is to take a little bit of real life history that most people don't know and mix it in. For example, the whole idea of the skull that up to now has been Abuela Mala. Now we know is the skull of Maria King Kingue, who was a real person. Yeah. She's an American horror story, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there's lots of, lots of those little Easter eggs that I have made over, over the years building Let's this give game. give our games master a big hand. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank okay. you so much babe every week it never s ceases to amaze me your creativity and your vibrancy in storytelling and it's just it's such a pleasure it's such a a gift to be sitting here with you well so, you guys you. don't know it in watching this but the number of hours that dave puts in behind the scenes to create <laughs> all Absolutely of this obsession um, level work it's you awesome know. And uh, Sh uh, Sugarberry says, uh, oh, New Orleans. Yes. That's where our... New Orleans. Madame no, Levine. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also, that's also where the ancestry of uh, Raven Alexium, also known as Alexander mm -hmm. Moulin, is mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Coincidence? Oh, I think not. I think not. <laughs> Therefore, I am not. Yeah. Okay, let's uh let's uh pack it in. We're gonna pack it in. Thanks everyone. We Thank will so be much. not Thanks, playing next week. <gasps> Janice and I are traveling. We are away. Uh the week after that uh is still I think kind of up for grabs. I'm gonna look really close quickly at the uh schedules. June the something seventh uh, by then. 
By the way, um, Cora turned 14 yesterday. So mm. if, happy birthday, if, Cora. If she's watching, which I mm. doubt she is because she's way too cool to be watching. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, baby girl. I love you. Cora. Yeah, that's that's Amanda's oldest, second oldest daughter, youngest daughter, Cora. And my granddaughter. Yes. Okay, uh, so we are away on the 5th, which is next, but the 12th after that. I think is okay. I think the 12th is okay. And I think we are going to shoot for that for sure to play. Um, I'm doing one last check out for good for gigs. Yeah. The 12th is okay as far so far for us. So hopefully we'll see everybody there. It just depends on everybody's schedule. Thanks again, folks. Everybody have a good night. Thanks for coming. Good night. Good night. Good night.